Battling the Viet Cong on their native territory was already treacherous enough. Did you know there was another war being fought only 10 meters below the surface? Welcome to Bizarre History, where today we are going to learn about the claustrophobic life of a tunnel rat in the Vietnam War. The Viet Minh were the Viet Cong resistance warriors who began excavating tunnels and bunkers to confront the French, finally defeating them in 1946. The Viet Cong had nearly 100 miles of tunnels by the time the Vietnam War broke out, allowing them to unleash lethal ambushes on American and South Vietnamese forces before vanishing into thin air, or so it seemed. The numerous spider holes, as the tunnel entrances were frequently referred to, were strategically placed and carefully hidden, making them practically invisible to anyone not trained to notice them. Now you can call them courageous or crazy, but it was the responsibility of the tunnel rat to sneak in alone to the tunnel's entrance and search for the enemy and other crucial intelligence. The tunnels were the lifeblood of the Viet Cong. To give the occupying forces any chance of winning the war, the effect of the tunnels had to be negated. The tunnels could be demolished from above ground, but because the tunnels were so complicated and snake-like, this was often insufficient to deconstruct the labyrinth completely. Someone would have to descend into the tunnels to obtain information that would help them plan their attack better. As a result, the tunnel rats were born. There were a variety of tunnels beneath the surface. Squad tunnels were usually less than six feet deep and 100 feet long. Company-sized tunnels were wider and battalion-sized tunnels could burrow as much as 50 feet underground and even contain up to four different levels. It was as if they had their own life down there, housing multiple hospitals, storage facilities, training camps, and barracks by the time the Vietnam War broke out in the 1960s. After that, effective ventilation shafts were created, allowing Viet Cong men to dwell underground for months at a time. The underground became even more enigmatic, unexplored territory where danger lurked around every corner. The Viet Cong anticipated the American forces would try to utilize the underground against them. Thus, the tunnels were filled with booby traps and hostile combatants. U-bands had been installed along the tunnels allowing sections of the tunnels to be flooded at a moment's notice, imprisoning soldiers. Similarly, access points where deadly gas might be delivered to kill or knock a soldier out were built. Less sophisticated traps were also deployed. But wait, there's more. Not only did they have to worry about man-made threats, there were also natural ones too. Various types of venomous snakes were released into the tunnels, only known to the Vietnamese even rats that carried the bubonic plague. If you were a tunnel rat, I hope you didn't have arachnophobia because they were also exposed to many insects. Some of them were deadly poisonous, such as scorpions and spiders. The tunnels were also used as roosts by bats and other species, giving even another diversion from the important tasks at hand. U.S., ANZAC, and South Vietnamese combat engineers and foot soldiers were required to enter the tunnels. They were tasked with gathering intelligence, destroying them, and killing or capturing soldiers who occupied them. Due to restrictions in space, the tunnel rat usually only carried a pistol or revolver, a bayonet, explosives, and a flashlight. They had first used dogs, but they could not detect booby traps, and their handlers flatly refused to sacrifice any more animals. They had tried grenades and tear gas, but this destroyed intelligence, so they used men. So if you were on the shorter side, lucky for you, because you were a perfect fit for this job. More petite men were recruited, usually under 5 foot 6, due to the small and narrow spaces they had to move around in. But you could not be ordered to be a tunnel rat. You had to volunteer for the position. There was a point man and a backup man. They had to conduct a full recon of the tunnel and gather intelligence. The tunnel rats would be lowered down head first. Yes, you heard right, head first into a dark hole, not knowing what was down there. 
He would be followed by a second man who would radio to the surface to map the tunnels. They had been given a standard issued an M1911 A1 pistol, but the large 45 caliber round caused a blinding muzzle flash and a ferocious noise in the confined space that could temporarily cause deafness. So tunnel rats would improvise their suppressors or use a civilian revolver sent from home. They placed C4 charges on weak points so the tunnel could be later destroyed. Tunnels were terrifying. If their occupants found you, they would kill you or worse. The tunnels could collapse, be booby-trapped or flooded. You could become lost or trapped and suffocate to death. Booby traps could be sharpened sticks, snakes, scorpions, or poison gas. Interestingly though, tunnel rats often risked not wearing a gas mask as they restricted vision, hearing, and breathing. When confronted with a Viet Cong soldier below ground, tunnel rats were forced to turn to hand-to-hand -to -hand fighting because firing a weapon in such a tight space could cause eardrum damage and jeopardize the stability of the environment surrounding them. However, for one veteran named Sapper Jim Moret, the tunnel rat's time underground was the least of his worries. Yes, the tunnels do sound pretty horrific, but there was another type of hell just about the surface. Merritt wrote in a personal essay for the New York Times that the majority of our casualties were above ground when we were engaged in the other part of our job, detecting and disarming mines and booby traps. Moret is said to have spent weeks in the bush searching for and disarming mines. During that time, 36 of us were killed and around 200 were wounded, resulting in a 33% casualty rate, which was excessive even by Vietnam War standards. During our tour, one of every three of us was killed or injured. Given what we were engaged in, it's a miracle the number wasn't larger, Moret said of his company's disasters. There were never more than 100 tunnel rats in the country at any given time, with a total population of roughly 700. There were 36 people dead and 200 people injured, a three in one chance, a staggeringly high rate of attrition. It's tough to grasp their ordeal, their terror, and the PTSD they've developed. Could you imagine living alone down there in Vietnam for 10,000 days, a million miles away from home, spending a majority of it underground, in the dark, in enemy territory. The tunnel rats had to use their creativity and remarkable bravery to fight in a never-before-seen kind of guerrilla warfare. Did we miss anything in today's video about the tunnel rats? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed learning about these courageous men and hope to see you next time for another Bizarre History video.